Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen this is the day that the Lord has made. Welcome, welcome all to Christ Lutheran Church. Glad that you are here to worship with us. Uh, I suspect most of you know me, but just in case, my name is Pastor Bruce Berg. I live in Marshall, and I'm frequently called upon to sub when your pastor is out goofing off. I mean, uh, <laughs> doing what pastors do in their time off. Uh, keep her in your prayers as she takes some well-deserved time off. I know that she's a hard-working pastor for you. I'm going to off ask one very selfish thing of you. I have a niece who is suffering with brain tumors, has lost her sight in one eye, and I would ask that you would keep Caitlin in your prayers. Uh, we don't know where this is all headed yet. She's an accomplished veterinarian, just finished vet school, has her own practice, and has to leave all of that behind right now. So. Ask, keep Caitlin in your prayers. Before we begin worship, though, let's uh, set aside all of the troubles that may be outside the doors of this church and allow the Holy Spirit to enter in. Close your eyes and allow the silence to grab us. Our opening words of faith this morning come from Psalm 4. Please join with me. Answer us when we call, O God. The Lord has set apart the faithful. Let the light of your faces shine on us, O Lord. Be gracious to us and hear our prayer. Answer us when we call, God. Our opening hymn.
I invite the assembly to stand as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. Trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. By our baptism into de the death and resurrection of Christ, God raised us to new life. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God of grace, we confess that we do not always live as resurrected people. We live within the fears and cares of the world, that we do not have enough, that we are not good enough. Forgive us for not seeing your image in us. Forgive us for not seeking your life in us. Help us to see that we are made in your love, your image, and your peace. We ask all these things in the name of the risen Christ. People of God, hear the good news. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. May the Almighty God strengthen you in the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Thanks be to God. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. 
Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The assembly may be seated. First reading is from the book of Acts, the third chapter. After, after healing a man unable to walk, Peter preaches to the people, describing how God's promises to Israel have been fulfilled in Jesus. Through the proclamation of Christ's death and resurrection, God is offering them forgiveness and restoration in Jesus' name. Beginning with the 12th verse. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this you are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is from the book of 1 John, the third chapter. God has loved us in order to make us children of God. Though we do not yet know the full details of our future existence, we trust that God will reveal it just as God revealed Jesus to take away our sins beginning with the first verse. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. I'd like to invite our children to join me up front for a children's message. Do we have any children who want to come up? Come on up and join me. Why don't you come on up here and sit with me on the steps. All right? And I have a treat for you too today. 
Have a seat. Sit right down there. How are you? Good. I'm glad to hear that. So, do you know what happened on Easter Sunday? What happened? It got snowy. I'm sorry, what? It got snowy. It got nice, didn't it? Yes. And, and what happened with Jesus on Easter? He raised from the dead, right? That was a surprise for a lot of people, wasn't it? And some of the, some of the people that followed Jesus, didn't, they thought Jesus was a ghost. And so in our gospel story today, Jesus asked his disciples for some fish. You, no, ghosts can't eat, right? No, they can't eat. And so Jesus figured, well, if I ask for fish, they'll know I'm not a ghost. So I am wondering, are you a ghost? No. No. Are you a ghost? No. And I want to make sure. So I brought some, I don't have fish with me, but I have goldfish crackers. <laughs> so would you like to eat a goldfish cracker? And then we can prove that you're not a ghost. There you go. You can have one. You can have even two if you want. You want two. Okay. There you go. Go ahead and eat them. There you go. Oh, they're good, aren't they? I like goldfish. I'm going to have one too. Now, you know what? I know that you're not a ghost. I know that you're not a ghost because you're eating goldfish. So Jesus asked his disciples, he said, give me a piece of fish. And he proved that he is not a ghost, but he is living, being, and among his disciples. One more? Sure. <laughs> Prove that we're not a ghost. There you go. There you go. You can take those back with you. But we should pray first before you go, okay? Thank you for coming up. Let us pray. You gonna pray with me? Okay. Dear God, dear God, thank you for being a risen Lord. Amen. Bye. Any more gold crack goldfish? Here, take a couple more before you go sit down. There you go. And I would invite the assembly to stand as you are able for our gospel acclamation. Before I begin the gospel reading, I'm going to be reading all the way to the end of the gospel of Luke. And you'll notice one peculiarity with Luke as compared to the other gospels. We normally assume that the ascension occurred 40 days after Jesus was resurrected. But Luke gives us the impression that Jesus ascended into heaven 
immediately following the events of this gospel reading. The Gospel of Luke, according to the 24th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. (coughs) He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do you doubt? Why does doubt arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see what I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, and he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending you upon what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessed by God. Here ends the gospel reading. Praise Praise to to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I'm going to come down among you as I share my message today. Excuse me. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I've said this in the past, my military history in the United States Navy usually comes into my sermons, and today is one of those days again where I draw upon an experience in the U.S. Navy. While on board the USS John F. Kennedy, anchored in Marseille, France, a small contingent was invited to come to the town of Oops, France. Oops is in Eiffel, is how it's pronounced. It's A-U-P-S. It's a small village, about 2,500 people. And it's in the foothills of the French Alps. It was the center of the French resistance during World War II. And so, Myself and seven other sailors dressed in our dress uniform with medals and all of the finery in our sharpest looking uniform went to the town of Oops. I'll up front say that you would be proud of our military personnel when they go and visit a town like Oops and wear their uniform. It looks so sharp and it has that diplomacy in showing that we are wonderful people. When we were in the town, the first place we went was to the cemetery. And there was a memorial service to remember the war dead, both of the French and American citizens that fought during World War II. Messages, speeches were delivered in English and in French so that we could understand what was going on. Then we laid a wreath at the tomb and the, the memorial marker in the town. Following the memorial service, we were given a brief tour of the town, and then we were invited to a feast in the town. Now, one of the other things before we were invited to the feast, and this is something I probably will never forget, I have never seen a hog as large as I saw at a farm that we visited, too. The town of Oops is known for its black truffles, and I don't know if you're familiar with that delicacy or not, but 
the pigs or hogs are normally used to find them. And so that was part of the stuff on the menu that day. So we were invited to this meal. Now, to say it was just a meal would not do it justice. They pulled out at all the stops. It was a feast by any comparison. Think French cooking, accompanied by the finest French wine. Now, I had one semester of high school French, and that's about all I knew, but it was enough to have a good conversation with my broken French and their broken English. We managed to communicate quite well at the dinner table. The food was phenomenal, as you can probably imagine. The conversation, both in the broken French and in the broken English, was phenomenal as we exchanged stories about our cultures and who we are and where we come from. It was a dinner full of rich conversation as two different cultures came together in a dining room and shared stories with one another. I would say never underestimate the power of a table talk. Let us now consider our gospel reading for today because it too involves table talk. In my own mind, I can imagine and try and imagine what it must have been like for the disciples as they encounter Jesus as his story unfolds in the gospel of Luke. Just for a moment, consider what happened the past few days for the disciples, also for that matter, the past three years. The followers of Jesus had witnessed some extraordinary events in the presence of Jesus. Just a few to mention, water being turned into the finest wine, Lazarus walking out of the tomb after being dead for three days, Jesus eating with prostitutes, with sinners, with people with various diseases and the like, and tax collectors of all people. Meals where Jesus fed thousands upon thousands of people with just a small quantity of bread and fish. Not to mention the loving and caring message that Jesus carried with him wherever he went. <coughs> Excuse me. In contrast to the disciples also witnessed the horrific death of their rabbi, their teacher, and their dear friend, their Messiah, if you will. Furthermore, the followers of Jesus knew that their own lives might be at stake. What happened to Jesus could very likely happen to them. The religious authorities could come after them and they could suffer a similar death to Jesus. So there was fear going on also at this time. But I'm getting ahead of myself just a bit. You know, I've preached the gospel enough times here at Christ Lutheran Church that you may wonder that I'm centered a little bit on food. So I look back at some of the sermons that I've had here, and they do center around food. But food and gathering, gathering at the table, gathering at this table up here, gathering at the table with the sweets after worship service, promote conversation, much like that town in Oops, where we sat at a table with our French companions and friends and had conversation. So the gospel today also gives us a narrative that revolves around the table. Consider this. The mission of the Gospels did not really begin at the empty tomb, but it began elsewhere. It began at the table with a piece of broiled fish. He smells the food and he looks over shoulders. There are those that are gathering around them and there are those that are probably stepping back just a little bit and saying, wait a minute. <coughs> Finally, in the midst of reassuring him that he is in fact alive, that he is in fact risen, he says, oh, you have a piece of fish. How ironic when you think about it. Someone catches on to his hunger and they give him a plate and, re and they watch as he chews and he swallows. As I mentioned with the children, ghosts can't eat, can they? And as they are assessing him in a more friendly manner, simply with the leftovers at the table, 
finally, with a nourishment, he engages in real conversation with the disciples. Spirituality and relationships are often connected to eating. It makes sense when you think about it. We are human. We require sustenance. We require food. Why not have a relationship as we enjoy that food? Eating is a human thing that must be done. Relationships are human and necessary. And spirituality is human. I don't know if the tradition still exists in homes in Christ Lutheran Church, but I know that a lot of families have the roast beef dinner after church, and it's an opportunity to gather around the table with family, talk about the preacher's message, and share the stories that occurred this week. It is a relationship, it is a time for fellowship to gather around the table. These things are linked to the reality of life. We cannot exist without food. And it is also true that our existence is impaired without relationships and without a spiritual health. This is why it is rare to experience social gatherings without food. Even as we leave worship, there are sweets out in the narthex to enjoy with a cup of coffee and maybe share how our week went. We live better when we eat, especially when we eat good things among one another. Again, I say, do not est underestimate the power of a table talk. Everyone knows the story on Easter morning now. The tomb is empty. It is the cornerstone of our faith. We understand that. A group of women, a couple of angels, and one very, very excited disciple discover that Jesus is on the loose. The empty tomb is huge. It is the cornerstone of our faith and our spirituality. It's what, but it's what happens at the table that spurs us to move forward. Track with me just for a moment as we consider these events. Okay, so the women discover the empty tomb and report to the apostles and the two, that the two angels had told them that Jesus Christ is written. Now, originally, the, the women aren't even believed they call it idle tale, and I think that's the kind version, if you will. Peter then runs to the tomb, looks in, and he becomes very excited and goes back and tells what has happened. So that's Easter morning. Now, you may recall there's another encounter with Jesus on Easter afternoon. Two disciples, one of them named Cleopas, and him are walking a seven-mile journey to Emmaus, and a third individual comes and joins them. We know it's Jesus later in the story, but this individual that's walking with Cleopas and the other disciple reveals to them what is going on and asks them, why are you sad? Why is what, what you're doing so sad? And it's in the breaking of the bread at the meal table with these two disciples that Jesus is revealed to them. And they too go back, they rush back. Now, fast forward to Easter evening. These two disciples say, hey, we saw Jesus. We saw him on a road. We saw him when he broke bread with us. And so we're to the point now where they're in the room. And Jesus says, give me a plate of fish. Not to prove so much that he's a gospel, but just to be part of who he is and with his disciples. And he says, look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And then to prove that he is not a ghost, he asked them for some food and they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he ate it in their presence. And that's when the fellowship starts. Then sitting at the table, Jesus tells them, these are my words that I spoke to you when I was with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Now, the, the apostles are probably wondering who is supposed to do this work that Jesus is telling them to do. 
And he says to them, you are witnesses to the things that you have seen. Go and tell people what you have seen. And so those stories about turning water to wine, those stories about feeding 5,000 people, those stories of love and eating with sinners and tax collectors and prostitutes, go share those stories. Teach my love to God's people. And it all happens at the dinner table. I find that profound. I find that very profound. Take notice of what happened here on Easter evening. The missions of the disciples began, not at the tomb, not at the walk to Emmaus, but in that dinner table discussion with Jesus. And I call this dinner table discipleship. So what is the takeaway message for this Sunday? I think it's rather obvious. As we think about the bond between Jesus and his disciples, there is a sense that is a theological form of table talk, if you will. Preaching the good news is a family legacy that Jesus wants his followers to be part of. A legacy of proclaiming the message of the risen Christ. He wants his disciples to maintain this cycle of gratitude and generosity. Go out. Share the meal. And again, share the meal at the communion table because it is who we are and what we do. Jesus leaves everything to his spiritual brothers and sisters and says that the Spirit will guide you. You are my witnesses to these things, he says. Now, depending upon which gospel you read, you can recall profound events of who Jesus is. He ate with the sinners. He preached a ministry of forgiveness and mercy and love and humility and especially grace. And God, God has the last word on Easter morning when Christ is no longer in the tomb. Amen and amen.
Please stand as we declare our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with one another. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. I um, want to thank Pastor Bruce Berg for doing such a wonderful job and, and helping us out and filling in for whenever Pastor Janelle is gone, when he is able, and we're very thankful to have you here. And uh, I am not organized enough to have roast beef in the uh, oven when I go home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so, so our tradition at home was brunch. So we would come home from church and it'd be pancakes, waffles, French toast, biscuits and gravy, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> so just a few announcements to touch on. Um, just a reminder that next week we have a council meeting after worship. And um, we do have a note in here about if anybody would be interested in being offering counters. You know, you just you can just um, you know stop back in the in the copy room and ask anybody who's counting to see if you could watch them, see what they do, and see if you'd be interested in helping us out with that. Um, it's you know just one of those necessary things that we have to have, and and um, if if that is something that you're being called to do, we would appreciate it. Um, this week for Welka, or this month for Welka, it's a busy. Busy month. Quilting is on Tuesday. And then on Saturday is the uh, Prairie Conference Spring Gathering over in Arco. And then on the May 4th, there's the Welka Synod Convention at Gloria Day in Redwood Falls. Um, let's see, this Friday is the uh, graveside service and reception for Donna Mae Reiches. And then uh, just a reminder that we do have Synod Assembly coming up in June. And um, we could use one more lay person for a, a lay, lay voting member. Um, Pastor Janelle and I will both be going, and it really is a really nice. Uh, I, I've been, I've done Senate Assembly once, or I've gone to Senate Assembly once. And it's a really nice way to kind of see some of the ins and outs of, of the Senate um, happenings, and it's a wonderful time to praise and kind of get refreshed and renewed and. It's just a really nice faith build experience. So, um, does anybody else have any other um, announcements that I'm missing? If not, then we will um, uh, collect the Lord's offering, please. Thank you.
us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where, is it, where it is in need of restoration from volcano eruptions, tornadoes, flooding, and other natural disasters. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Awaken the soil to be ready to receive the seeds of planting time. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness, for equity for all people. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to all leaders to keep our commandment to love you and love our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Bring healing to those who struggle with the chains of addictions and depression. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness, especially Caitlin and Barb, Terry and Linda, for Brad and Ione, for Linda and Joyce. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Invite us to recognize and revere your divine image and likeness in our neighbor. Reveal yourself to us so that we who live in faith in you and are made in your image of mutual love and bold witness can recognize the reality of racism and, fear and free us to challenge and uproot it from our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us and pray for those who grieve. Assure all of us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I invite the assembly to stand for our blessing and closing hymn. Beloved, we are God's only people, holy, washed, and renewed. God bless you and keep you and shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn.
share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.